Today we're joined by Stephen M. Smith, who is the director writer of Dead Again. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you. Very well, thank you. Good. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate yeah, it. It's really good. Yeah, it's good. Fantastic. Fun. Um, Dead Again. What's Dead Again all about? So Dead Again is. Um, it's. How can I put it? I kind of. I've always wanted to make a kind of hot fuzz Shaun of the Dead style movie, and I know I'd never have the budget, but I just thought, well. I'm gonna give it a go. So I wrote this script in two days, as you do, and thought, well, let's go and shoot this in three days. I'll give myself three days to shoot it. Um, but we had a really amazing location in, in Devon, and this was obviously before social distancing, and we had real good fun making it. I, re I think we all realized when we were shooting it, this was really good. I actually drove down with the two lead cast, Tony and Elliot, who were really, really good in it. Um, and I knew they were reading all the lines and I'm laughing, we're all laughing, I'm thinking this is going to be good, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is with these sort of movies is that distribu distribution companies don't want these sort of movies, they want straight and out horror, they want one genre, they want to stick to that genre. So luckily we've, we've, I've said oh, I'm going to make this movie and we've had really good reviews, hence it's in the Romford Film Festival which is a really good festival to get it into because they really do pick their films properly. So, yeah, really, really good. Absolutely fantastic. Now, it almost seems to most of us uh, struggling script writers out there, inconceivable that you can write this in two days. How do, how do you achieve such a thing? I'm one of these people that is very observant. I may come across as somebody who could be quite quiet sometimes, but I could look at, it's people I meet. Not to say that you would turn into a character, but if you have a trait, <laughs> if you have something about you that's interesting, yes. that's fascinating, yes. then it becomes, it could be, potentially become a character. With me, Dead Again was about putting, I love to put characters into places out of their depth. So for, I thought, what, what about if it would be a good idea to have somebody who's retiring in the most boring place in the world? Originally, I'd say in Scotland. It was supposed to be set in Scotland and Ireland where there's nobody, right? Mm. But I couldn't afford to go to Scotland, it was too far away. Um, and then if you were there and it's your first day, and you've got this guy who's the last day and the first day, and that's where the concept came from. And I thought, well, imagine if it all goes to pop on that day. And that's really where it came out of. Fantastic. And, and your lead, Tony Fidel, is plays the retiring cop. Yeah. And he plays it wonderfully. Yeah. It's a great role, isn't it? Well, I wrote it for Tony. So oh, you did. I actually, I actually said to Tony, I've got this, this film and I've worked with Tony before and Tony, Tony's a bit of a method actor so he basically goes into his character and I thought, well, why don't I just wrote, write this character as Tony? Being a bit of a lad, a bit of a, you know, and just a little bit more to it so that way he, I know what it's going to be like. Elliot I've worked with before as well yeah. on another film so, and Elliot was completely different. So I thought, well, actually these will work together. If Elliot be, can be this kind of sidekick to him almost. You know? and, and that's exactly what you juxtapose this incompetent 30 year long sergeant yeah. or whatever it is against this absolute rookie who's just coming out first day on the street yep. and then this chaos happens yeah. it's absolute chaos and somehow they've got to cope and get through it yeah and there's, there's never been any chaos before so you can imagine you working maybe in the cinema for 30 years yeah. and you were taught 30 years ago, that was, that was how it was taught to you, that's how it is. And then a new person comes in and says, no, 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 this is the way it should be done now. But you can't, because if the person in charge is the person in charge, this is very much like the army, um, you have to abide by that, that yes. rank. Yes, 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 absolutely. So, again, you said something which is pretty scary. You've gone out, you've, you've, you've written t two days to write a script, mm -hmm. which has totally worked yeah. on screen, totally works. And then you've gone and said earlier on, three days to shoot it. Yeah. How can you possibly shoot this film in three days? Well, it's, it's about the planning. So um, I, I say to myself, well, if I can get 100, 100 shots a day, now 100 shots a day, <laughs> yeah, then you, you can get a movie. So in the end, I think we got 80 to 90 shots a day. So I had to actually have a fourth day. But the main reason I had a fourth day was because we shot this in winter last year originally and we just couldn't get the extras in so hence we have say maybe two or three creatures at the beginning by the end we have lots of creatures that are shot um, but that's movie making movie making for me I'm, I'm kind of a doer rather than a sayer if, I, if something's going to happen I do it now it doesn't always work out but then at the end of the day at least I've done it and I make 
four to six films a year. They are all commercial. They're all successful financially because I make sure I make them under a certain amount. And I know my limitations when I'm writing it. I don't say I'm going to write a huge car chase with explosions. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, what can we do? I say, okay, we have a, we have a zombie apocalypse. What about if that's happening three or four miles away mm -hmm. and we focus in on the most boring village in the world? <laughs> well, how would they cope with it? Yeah. The fact that you've just said that you make how many films a year on average? Four to six. I'm involved in about ten films That's a year. That's crazy. That is so prolific. It's unbelievable. And we take hats off to that. Thank <laughs> you for that. So as a director, and I know you're an experienced writer-director, but as a director, do you storyboard? What's your process? Do you wait to get on, on set and see how the actors are moving to sort of determine your blocking? What are you doing? So me as a director, I kind of have different approaches to different films. So, for example, if I'm casting someone like Tony and I've already written the character for him and I know who Elliot is, that's brilliant. I, I, I know how they're going to act, to act and we just have to rehearse it. Other times you may storyboard or create sequences and say, well, actually, this sequence, like the fight sequence, the, 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 the end, the finale yeah. to this movie, mm -hmm. we kind of wrote out how that was going to be shot by shot. And I think there was 210 shots within that final mm -hmm. sequence. Mm -hmm. And you kind of roughly work them out. Now, luckily, I've worked at the, the same location several times, so I know it in and out. And it's really just using what you have and, and around you. Mm. But I also sometimes like walking into a room, and Spielberg does this. He'll walk into a room, he'll get nervous, he won't storyboard it. He'll then go, let's see what the actors can do. Let's do a rehearsal, Absolutely. where they take it with us. Yes. And then you fine-tune it, because you have to give actors credit you have to give them freedom I wouldn't certainly wouldn't write anything and then expect an actor that I've never ever worked with to come in and be word for word on mm. my script because mm. that's pretentious mm. I would say there's leeway mm. and there's um, you know you have to adapt yes so so that's really fascinating for, for sort of first time or early filmmakers here that on occasion you'll just come in, say, guys, go for it, let's see what happens, and then you're thinking afterwards about where you're placing the camera, whether it's moving. As we're doing rehearsal, so as we're doing rehearsal, yes. I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's the simple master shots, there's yes. the two shots, yes. but things will come to you, and, and, and you see that within Dead Again, you see little bits and pieces where, you know, because we haven't got the money, perhaps we would have, could have done with a big, big crane creating the shot that I wanted, but we've kind of come up with something. And I think that's the best way because then everybody's involved and everyone kind of goes, oh, how's this going to work? How that's going to work? They also know their positions. So you'll, you almost rehearse the scenes of play. Mm. And then you've got their positions and I'm going, great, I can come in with a two shot there, I can come in with a single there, I can move the camera there, I can have that shot, I have that as a cutaway. And then you won't need as much coverage. So you go, actually, I only really need this person's lines sometimes. Mm. Mm. Um, and that also saves time. Okay, that's fantastic advice for new filmmakers, absolutely brilliant. So tell us about challenges. You said it's a crazy shoot, a short shoot. That's a bit of a mouthful there. <laughs> um, so you're relying on, you're relying on some good actors there, able to remember their lines and pretty much get spot on what you're asking them to do first time almost. Well, not really, because I think that what you're saying is that what are they going to give to the party? Right. You know, and the thing is, if you do know what an actor is and who an actor is, then you know what they're going to give. And I think it's sometimes you can you can you can jump in and say, well, I want you to do it exactly like this. I, I'm I'm kind of not not that's not needed. I think my advice to filmmakers who are starting out is to take a step back, relax, let the people around you see what they can do and bring to the party. Because sometimes a DP will come up with an idea. Sometimes you could put a light somewhere and go, oh, that looks good. And you never knew that. And you thought, actually, why don't we just change the mood of this scene a little bit? It also helps the actors. Mm. Um, and actors feel more comfortable if they know the beginning, the middle, and the end of a scene. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Absolutely. that's how I work it. It sounds like you're a fairly easy director to work with. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. easy. I'm a, I'm a business. I'm a business-minded person. So there's always that producer side of me. When it yeah. comes to directing, I'm very relaxed about yeah. what, what we do. It's almost tough, isn't it? You got this. Sh get yeah, it done. Because you, you producer. Yeah, we well, need to get these shots in the can. So, so 
I briefly mentioned challenges. Any challenges? Or well, no? yeah, the challenges. The challenges are. Um, I think, especially on Didier and I didn't have another producer, so I produced it all oh. myself. I think the challenges were really about making sure that everybody was going to be able to have fun making this movie because it's a, that's the biggest challenge. You're like, well, this isn't Hollywood. You know, you've not got a big Winnebago around the corner, which we'd love. I always say, well, next time I'm going to have, you know, a jacuzzi that we could all get into. That will be the, that's the bonus for us. <laughs> we'll all jump yeah. in the jacuzzi at the end of the day. But uh, you can't even do that with social distancing. No, no, no. no. So foot, bar, foot spas, I think individual foot spas, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you work closely with your DOP, obviously. Yeah. Do you work with the same DOP or you mix it up? Or? I mix and match. I, yeah. mean, I think the thing is sometimes I'm DOP. Oh, I, oh. So on, on Dead Again, I am the DOP. So I've, I've shot everything as well. Mm. Um, but with, I've just done, a, I mean, Dollhouse, I was, dedica- I was the DOP. We did have a DOP, but it didn't work out. I've just done a movie in Devon. We had an incredible DOP. Um, but that's mainly because of COVID-19 and he's not got any other work. Mm. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> those are the challenges. Well, it's, movie by movie, it's different. It's so different. Yeah, and it sounds like you rise to the challenge and basically you've got so much experience that even if you fall short with somebody, you can just step in yourself. Like yeah, sound of yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. Like, it's about knowing each other's jobs. Has, has it been submitted anywhere else or is this the first festival for you? So this, is the, this was the very first screening. So this was the premiere. The public, yeah. This was the, this premiere. Is the world premiere. It's the world premiere. Yeah. How privileged are we? Thank you so much for doing <laughs> that. Um, I absolutely think you're going to get inundated now <laughs> with resumes from actors and people because it sounds like you're a really easy person to work with. Yeah. Um, we wish you every success. Thank you. Dedicated. Thank you so much for being prepared to be interviewed well, by us. And of course, giving us the world premiere for Dead Again. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you to the Romford Film Festival. Thank you to the Romford Film Festival. Amazing place, amazing people. And next year, when we get it full up, my, none of my films will get in because they're just, it, my films are there, but the films here <laughs> are up there, I'm telling you. So if you can watch and support the Romford Film Festival, support it 100%.